pick of Salesforce.com, the king of cloud computing. Now that its stock has rallied 28% year to date, can the spectacular run continue? Well, the company just reported after the close, and it delivered a two cent earnings beat off the 26 cent basis, higher than expected revenue of 25% year over year, and a forecast increase of $100 million for fiscal 2018. Salesforce beat on billings, it beat on bookings, and on the all important unbilled deferred revenue, with the latter up 26% versus last year. All in all, business looks strong, and it sure doesn't hurt that the company recently announced some major expansions into artificial intelligence, which many see, of course, as the future of tech. So let's take a closer look with Mark Benioff, the visionary co-founder, chairman, CEO of Salesforce.com. Hear more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Benioff, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, great to be with you, Jim. Thanks for having me again. All right, Mark. So yes, indeed, just for a couple weeks ago, a raising <laughs> uh, fiscal revenue guidance of $100 million. Is that some big new contracts that we did, didn't know about that you landed? Well, it really is, Jim. I mean, we're just seeing an amazing set of situations for Salesforce and customer wins, foreign exchange going our way. And, and also, you see, it's really the culmination of many great quarters coming together to produce amazing numbers for this quarter. Well, you know, we have some, a lot of people have always been saying to me, Jim, why do you think that, uh, that Salesforce is doing so well? And you listen to Mark Benioff, but there were some IDC numbers that just came out. We have a chart which actually shows IDC <laughs> independent. You don't own IDC, let's make that point clear. That does show that you're pulling away. And how are you doing that? Well, you can really see we are crushing Oracle. You can see it on the chart right there, SAP, Microsoft. Uh, it's just across the board, we're getting all these great wins in sales and service and marketing. And yesterday, Jim, I was down in Las Vegas at our uh, incredible e-commerce conference, and uh, we had over 1,500 retailers down there learning how to get e-commerce going for their companies. And Jim, now eight of the top 10 retailers in the world are on Salesforce's commerce cloud. That's amazing. Okay, well, I want to talk about one because there's one that I am very... Uh, excited about because I think it's a great company that has not necessarily been able to do what is right for its shareholders. That's Ralph Lauren. And apparently they're uh, undergoing a huge transformation. We know that could just hire a new CEO. Uh, they've always had great merchandise, but not necessarily been in sync. They chose you to create a best-in-class experience around the world. So let's say I go into a Ralph Lauren store. What will happen? What will I see that may have been related to what you do for sale, uh, at Salesforce? Well, Jim, you're absolutely right. Every major retailer in the world is going through a huge transformation from being primarily kind of brick and mortar based right. to going online. And in some cases, exactly as you mentioned, they're doing both. They're linking their retail physical presence with online. That is really powerful. And we're doing all that through the Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Of course, you look at some of these huge retailers like Ralph Lauren, like you mentioned, right. or Adidas, or my favorite, Seize Candy. <laughs> I can tell you, Jim, that in each and every one of these cases, these customers are able to sell more because they're using these incredible online digital capabilities. And the number one, exactly as you mentioned, artificial intelligence. So we can provide a better solution and better experience for that consumer as they're shopping, whether they're in the store or online. And last yesterday in Las Vegas, we talked about how we have 350 350 million shoppers now using our commerce cloud. That is incredible. Now, when you say artificial intelligence, if you go into a, a, a store, most of the stores still don't seem to know what I want, like Amazon does. Is, will that change? Absolutely. And not only because you're, they're going to know what you want, they know what you have purchased, they know what they have on hand, they know what your preferences are, they know what's hot in the store, in that geography, and they're able to give you that best offer right in the store. And uh, you're going to see that through Salesforce's Commerce Cloud, and we're absolutely committed to continuing to deliver the number one commerce solution in the world for retailers. All right, now you've done some partnerships of late that are of a particular note. I know you've expanded your Amazon Web Services. You've done more with Visa. But I, it's this IBM one I want to talk about because IBM is uh, on their side are telling me this is a real needle mover. Uh, needle mover for them must be super needle for you, for you, I mean, given the size of them versus you? Well, you're absolutely right, Jim. We have ex dramatically expanded our relationship with Amazon Web Services, which, as you know, is the number one cloud in the world infrastructure. Uh, they're doing a great job at Amazon. I know you follow them very closely, yes. as do I. And they're really growing using Salesforce's sales, service, and marketing solutions. We're even running some pretty big advertisements with them around the world on that very subject. And, and number two, Visa, yes, we expanded wall-to-wall -wall in sales with them. 
and three, IBM, we're helping them transform their customer service experience. So this is a really powerful time for Salesforce. I mean, one of the things you mentioned right up top, but we've been talking endlessly about how, look, the currency's hurt, currency's hurt, currency's hurt. People need to hear from you. That is no longer the case necessarily in some of these countries you're in. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Last, last year, of course, we had Brexit and the Great British Pound had unbelievable volatility that was unprecedented in its history. And uh, we suffered from that, as men, many companies did. And right now, of course, it's a stable currency environment. So we're able to just show our results and show the, you know, tremendous increases that we've made in our revenue, in our margin, and in our cash flow. Jim, you can see in the last three years, We've now doubled our revenue, but we've tripled our cash flow. That's pretty incredible. But you didn't, in, in fairness, you raised your full year fiscal year revenue, but this time you maintain your operating cash flow guidance from February 28. Is there something I should know there? Well, what you should know is the company is doing fantastic so that we're now going to do $10.3 billion in revenue this year, and we're going to continue to deliver world-class cash flow performance. We're going to continue to increase our margin, which we're deeply committed to. And, Jim, you can also see that we now have four, over $14 billion in book business on and off the balance sheet. That is spectacular right. capability. Now, you did give a, is it a shout out? Or you just felt like you had to mention that uh, approximately $450 million related to unbuilt deferred revenue from demandware. Is that because demandware, you want to show that that's working out well? Oh, demandware is working out more than well. It's exceeded my expectations. Jim, you know, last year we bought three amazing companies that really were jewels. We've talked about that. One was Demandware, one was Crux, and another one was Quip. And in the quarter, we saw, I think it was about $4 billion in sales on the Commerce Cloud using Demandware. That was beyond our expectations. So the growth of Demandware in retail and commerce, th this is incredible. And then if you look at Crux, they also had an incredible conference yesterday called Data Matters in Las Vegas that I went to. And we had 1,000 customers there learning how to leverage data to make their marketing more effective. And finally, you touched on Quip. And Quip had an incredible deal at 21st Century Fox this quarter where they're replacing Microsoft Office with 20,000 users using Quip. That is an incredible story. Well, I, I'd like to hear more. I'm trying to get a sense when you see the IDC numbers here about Microsoft. Who are you replacing some other? I mean, look, this has got to be some share take. There's got to be someone, SAP, Oracle, that you won business yeah. from this quarter because they're going to tell me, listen, let me tell you who we won from Salesforce. Yeah. I know. They always come and say, oh, well, we're doing all this great stuff against Salesforce. But, Jim, let's go back to that market share chart. Take a look at those numbers. Look at our market share line, Jim, against SAP and Oracle, they're flat to down. We're up exponentially. There's no comparison. And how they come on these shows and talk about this without numbers, these are the numbers that you need to see. Here's, this is IDC, an independent research firm, the top in our industry, by the way, making this incredible proclamation. Well, it does, look, it is independent. It's not just me saying it. It's not just you saying it. It was obviously a great quarter. Stocks had a very big run. Who knows what they do tomorrow, but that's not the point. It's how they do in the next few <laughs> years, because it's pretty obvious how you've done in the last few years. Mark Benioff, co-founder, chairman, CEO of Salesforce. Great to see you, sir. Great to see you, Jim. We want you back here in San Francisco. We'll be there. Hope to see you Don't soon. worry. We'll be there. All Come right. Come on back. <laughs> Salesforce with another great quarter. It's run a great deal. But if it comes in, I got to tell you, it is an opportunity. It is doing better than a lot of the other cloud companies that are reporting even this this very evening. Bad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.